Okay, so in the past we've talked about the vote, the Voters' Rights Act of 1965, which pushes in a, protections for, especially for people in the South, that were being mistreated like African Americans uh, by white Southerners. And now we're looking at, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 would give equal protection under law, regardless of your race, gender, creed, or religion. Now we're going to talk about affirmative action. And this is probably big, uh, John F. Kennedy's big idea that really changes things. And uh, people still talk about it. There's a lot of misinformation about affirmative action today. Whew, it's hot in here. Okay, so President John F. Kennedy in 1961, and this is before both of those, required that government employees, government employees, quote, not discriminate against any employee or applicant for unemployment because, because of race, creed, color, or national origin. And this is the where we get the term from, take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and that the employees are treated during employment without regard to their race, creed, color, or national origin. So these are protections that were granted through an executive order. This is not a law, wasn't a law, an executive order called affirmative action. So in federal government jobs, you cannot be discriminated based on your race, creed, color, or national origin, and then they can't mistreat you once you're in the job based on your race, creed, color, or national origin federally. This changes the game, though. Because this sets a standard, and we know that the president, John F. Kennedy, and presidents afterwards, they get to execute the laws. So they can ex execute and interpret affirmative action. So obviously you're going to see some, uh, maybe some divide on this, but many presidents have taken this very serious, and they really make sure that companies are diversifying, uh, and the, uh, the United States government is, is diversifying their labor force and that's why you'll see a lot of federal workers are very diverse in these jobs. So, for example, the post office is one of the biggest hires of many people of many different racial groups. Um, and that's because this affirmative action started very strong very early on in 1961 to allow that. So this is there's a lot of misperceptions and misunderstandings of affirmative action. So affirmative action programs favor African-Americans in private industry and the programs corrected past injustices. This is... Uh, the it's cases comes from this idea of Weber versus Kaiser later on. It's it's kind of trying to correct things. But what I want you to understand that this is basically anybody that wants to deal or is with the federal government or is a government institution can be brought and been charged or uh, talked to about affirmative action. Now, there's a couple of myths about affirmative actions. And I can tell you growing up as a white man, uh, and a boy, I would hear these myths. I would hear things like, oh, you know, qualified white people aren't hired because, you know, affirmative action, there's quotas. They have to have like 30 or 40 or 50 percent African American or Latinx people at this company. And that's why I didn't get hired. That is actually not true. We are going to find out that uh, affirmative action has been stated by the Supreme Court that that can't happen. And we'll find out why. But the idea is that companies that want to actually work with the federal government, which you think about how powerful the federal government is, they do everything from housing regulations to schools, police force, all these programs are connected, are, are sell anything to the U.S. government or are a part of the government have to follow affirmative action. And if they don't, they'll lose bids. So say if you're trying to build something like the uh, Geospace uh, Center downtown um, in St. Louis and the, they look at your workforce and you have 1% African American and no Latinx or Asian Americans, that's going to be an affirmative action issue. And they're going to not want to hire your company, if that makes sense. And that's a lot of money that they could have gotten. So companies will diversify so that they get hired. And also, if there's discrimination uh, in any company that is working with the federal government under affirmative action, you can come forward and you can sue and make sure that you're treated, to prove that you're not treated equal, and, and you could win a lawsuit. So in 1988, Congress passed a new civil rights legislation that permitted the federal government to take away federal funds from colleges that discriminate too. So colleges might get federal funding as well, and this made a law that if a college is not trying to diversify and reaching out to students from different cultures and, and backgrounds and skin colors, 
that they can, in fact, refuse to send money. And you've got to think that if you're a university, state and federal government spends a lot of money or they give you tax credits, which means that you don't pay taxes. They'll consider you a non-profit. You'd lose your, your tax credit status and you have to pay taxes. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars. So money does talk. And affirmative action is very important and it can be very effective. Um, one difference is it, is it is enforced by the president, so it does very much depend on who the president is. So some universities might get uh, in trouble if they're not following this, and others might be ignored depending on the president. They might allow some of this to happen. So we talked about, however, there is a, the myth that affirmative action has quotas. That The reason that is a myth, we're going to find out in a second. So... Regret Regents, Regents versus the University of California versus Bake case established that race was permissible as one of several admission criteria. This is very important. The Supreme Court said yes. When a when you apply to a college, colleges can look at race and they can use that to try to diversify their student bodies because we know today that still uh, white Americans have almost twice as many college degrees on average than African Americans and Latinx people. I believe. Uh, over 30% of white Americans graduate college, where only about 15% of Latinx and African Americans graduate college. That's a big difference, proportionally, too. We're talking proportionally. So colleges are trying to reach out and diversify. They might have student fairs, diversity fairs, and so forth. And workplaces, too, like school districts, will have diversity fairs. They want to get more teachers of color that reflect the students they teach. However, this is very important. Quotas are not in the civil rights act of 1965 and cannot be used by affirmative action programs that is very 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 important i want to go over that again however quotas cannot be used according to the civil rights act of 1964 and cannot be used in affirmative action programs so if a company or a university they have some kind of quota and that's the myth that I told you that people, have, and I've heard it, people still say that myth. They say, oh, no, there's quotas. No. You could set targets. You could set goals. Like, think about uh, schools could be like, we want to maybe have something like half the students are, are students of color. That's a good goal, but if you don't achieve it, you don't force it to happen. If you force it to happen, according to Regents of the University of California versus Bake, that's actually against affirmative action. You can get sued the other way, or they could lose federal funding, and that can cause other problems. So that's very important. You can have targets. You can say, hey, we'd like to maybe get, since 15% of Afri uh, America's African, or 13% of America's African American, and 15% Latinx, we should try to get 13% African American, 15% Latinx. So let's, let's make those targets and diversify, or, you know, 2% is Asian American, and, or 1% is Indigenous American. What's, what's set up targets? But you can't force it. You can't have a uh, white um, qualified candidate and a black uh, qualified candidate and give up the position to meet a quota, if that makes sense. But you can use race as a criteria. Like, hey, we want to diversify it. We, we would like to know what your race is. Uh, and they could do incentives, where many universities do. Like, where if you have Af you're African American, they might offer more scholarships to diversify. That's completely legal. That's completely allowed. So that really breaks the myths about affirmative action, and I think it helps us understand the importance that quotas are against the law, according to this case. And you, that's a very important point.